Welcome to this series and catch up. We're going to be looking at reliability and validity in this session. What are we going to be covering? So I'm going to give you an introduction to what reliability and validity mean in the context of research methods. Importantly, we're going to be talking about distinguishing between the two of them. These terms are always mixed up with students. And then we're going to talk about the different types of reliability and validity in research methods. So our starting point, as always, is the specification. So what does the spec say about reliability and validity? Well, it actually says quite a lot. So it says reliability across all methods of investigation. And we've got ways of assessing reliability, which is test, retest and inter-observer reliability, and then improving reliability. Similarly for validity, we've got types of validity across all methods of investigation. Then we've got face validity, concurrent validity, ecological validity and temporal validity. And again, we've got assessment of validity and improving validity. Now, just a little bit of an exam tip here. Reliability and validity, although extremely important in research methods, will appear across the specification. And they're going to be terms that you're going to frequently use, most notably as part of your evaluation of studies in paper one, two and three. Right. The skills required for reliability and validity. There's a number of different layers to this. The most important skill is to know what is actually meant by these terms. Then you've also got to understand why it is important that research should be both reliable and valid. You've got to understand that there are different types of validity and reliability. Consider issues surrounding validity and reliability in research and ways of overcoming those issues. So how we can improve reliability and validity and then how we can assess whether or not we've got them. So you can see we start with these two terms, reliability and validity, but there's a very broad spectrum of knowledge that you're expected to demonstrate. Right, let's start with reliability. Now, I like to think of reliability as one word, and that one word is consistency. So we're talking about something being reliable, we're talking about it staying the same. So when we talk about reliability in the context of psychological research, we're talking about are the results of a psychological investigation similar every single time we carry it out. The next one is validity. So validity, again, one word to summarize it. What is validity truly about? It's about the accuracy of what I'm doing. So whether I'm measuring what I'm supposed to be measuring. Now, students mix these up, these terms. So the example that I often use with students to demonstrate how validity and reliability kind of interact with each other, if you like, is to think about the scales in a gym. So, for example, my weight might be, let's say, 70 kilograms. It's not, to be honest, I don't know what weight is. Let's say, though, it's 70 kilograms. If I go to the gym and I step on the scales and the weight on the scale says 70 kilograms, that is a valid measurement because it's accurate. If then the next day I go to the gym and nothing's changed in my weight and it still says 70, that method is both accurate and also reliable. That's to say it's consistent. But what about my weight is 70 kilos and I go to the gym and I step on the scales and it says 65. The next day I go again, it says 65. That method is not valid but it is reliable. Now, in terms of validity and reliability, there's different types of these, and these are terms invariably that you've come across in your studies. So when we think about validity, we can think about face validity, concurrent validity, construct validity, external and internal validity. And when we think about reliability, we've got internal and external. Now, we'll be exploring these in later sessions as well, but what do you actually know about these terms? There's space in your booklet for you to write this down. Right, let's just run through the different types of validity. Face validity. 
So face validity, think about it. It generally looks like it does what it's supposed to do. So the face part of it is like on the face of it, this tool looks like it measures what it's supposed to measure. Internal validity is about what I've done in my research. So it looks at are the results that I've got as in part of my research because I manipulated my independent variable to produce a change in my dependent variable or are the results because of other factors. Construct validity. So construct validity is does the measure that I'm using successfully measure the concept that it's supposed to? Like if I'm doing an IQ test, for example, are the questions on there actually measuring IQ? Now, concurrent validity is usually used when you've got an assessment of something that's relatively new. So to test whether or not that measure itself is valid, I can look at that measure against a measure that's already pre-existing and I know is valid to test essentially that I get the same results. Then we've got external validity. Now, external validity is about the ability to be able to generalize my findings beyond the research setting itself. OK, let's look at types of reliability. So we've got a distinction between internal reliability and external reliability. With internal reliability, I'm looking at the measurement tool that I'm using and checking that it is consistent within itself. So are all the questions on a questionnaire essentially measuring the same thing with external validity i'm looking at how the measurement tool that i'm using might vary from one use to another so i'm assessing the consistency across different measurements of the same thing let's then apply our knowledge of reliability and validity to these five different statements or examples on the screen these also appear on the workbook that you've got all I would like you to do is read through each and make a note of whether you think it's referring to validity or reliability. So I suggest you pause the video here because I'll go through the answers next. So here we've got a piece of research. A researcher replicated research by Loftus on misleading information and eyewitness testimony and she found very similar results. That's obviously about reliability because it shows consistency of the results from one measure to another. Second one, two researchers of children playing a playground and recorded the number of aggressive behaviours they saw on a tally chart. After the study, the two researchers correlated the results to see if they had recorded similar findings. So that's an assessment of inter-rater reliability, which is a check of the consistency between two different observers and their results. Next one, a researcher was not happy with this study after deciding that the way he tested memory recall was not really representative of real life use of memory. Now that's about validity. And it's interesting because I'm sure in many of the evaluations that you write about memory research, you're actually referring to this. For example, if you're referring to the use of trigrams to test memory, you probably say that that's not really valid because that's not how we recall things in normal life. For four, a student achieves similar scores in a test each month, suggesting that there is a consistent understanding of a subject. Again, that's about reliability, consistent performance. And finally, five, a researcher investigated the effect of alcohol on memory ability. Although it impaired memory, she did not account for alcohol tolerance or sleep deprivation, which could have affected the results. And that's about validity. So a question mark in terms of whether that study is actually measured what it intended to measure. Excellent work, folks. I hope you found that session useful. We'll be carrying on in the next session.